in the office. Oh, it's the Oscar you whisper. <laughs> oh, I whisper. Yeah, I whisper. You're like, oh, you're not listening? Allow me to talk even smaller. Yeah. 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 The worse the show is going, the quieter I get. <laughs> but again, like, is dominance... Um, it's an announcement. Oh, okay, awesome. Saying. Yeah. Um, is dominance being loud, or is dominance requiring other people to be quiet so they can hear what you say? I mean, it just depends on how you're... Any, anything can be used, um, or different things can be used to achieve the same goal. Yeah. Um, like, I'm very big and loud on stage, and you are a lot softer on stage, but those things are working the same way because of the way that we're using them. Yes, yes, no, for sure, for sure. I, you know, and I, I, I love, I, I, I feel like I, I learned something. Um, anyways, <laughs> please keep. I, I like what you said about the different emotions, though, because a lot of times, like, newer comics will just have the one emotion. They're like, I'm enraged about punk rockers or commercials or whatever, right? And then, but ch picking a, an emotion like confusion is a more unique emotion. So if you pick a more unique emotion, you get a more unique joke. You put something else into the into the fry later, you get a different French fry. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that because I think that you're right, Jackie, not only in, well, rage is a masking emotion, right? So like, um, we all, when we feel afraid or um, nervous or there's a bunch of different emotions that anger can step forward and be uh, the thing that we're actually showing people. Yeah. And especially in our culture where we're taught that like anger's okay, but like for instance, sadness or shyness aren't. So the easiest access point would be anger. Like the easiest thing to do on stage would be to come out and like, these are the things that make me mad because that's, that's an emotion that we're- It's acceptable. Yeah, we're taught to like delve into. Um, that's also what I said earlier about like using overtly like super sexualized things mm -hmm. is also a way of again sort of like masking nuance. A lot of times I think newer comics also start with really sexy stuff because it's a way to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, self-protection, and it's also like taboo. Yeah. So we get laughs from taboos also, that's why like um, using offensive words works for a laugh, like, I don't see comics using, I don't see that many white comics using the N-word anymore, although some still do, but a lot of white, com or a lot of straight comics use the F-word that means gay. Um, Friendly? <laughs> what a hilarious joke. Um, <laughs> use the F-word that means gay and, and get a reaction from the audience and, and are, are ch chalking that up as if they got a real laugh, when really what they're getting the audience to do is to, like, feel uncomfortable and, um, and defensive. And yeah, and so, you know, when we're challenging ourselves, I think it's to, definitely taboos can work, um, but like what's you the most start interesting angle? Yes, you, and, and genuinely you have, to, with the, when you first start doing stand-up, you're gonna start with rage, or you're gonna start with, a lot of the, the new young comics I've noticed are starting out with a lot of fear, too. Like they wanna describe the horrible thing that happened to them as a child. And because they know, they think it's funny, and it will be possibly one day, because they lived through it. And they, it's like, it's hilarious. I, this horrible thing happened to me. <laughs> I lived, you guys. But there's, but then they, you need another punch on top of that. And so if they're super new and you try to do an emotion like fear, it doesn't always work right away. It just makes people uncomfortable and sad for you, which um, I don't know if, that means that you shouldn't start with rage and fear, or if it means that you should, like if you should start with something more in the middle, like confusion or delight, or something something more more accessible. Those are those are harder jokes to get reactions to because you have to actually write punchlines to them uh, right away. But uh, they possibly might be a good uh, exercise. Yeah, and again, go, Thinking about it, and, it, and I, if there are different words that work for you in your mind besides dominance and submission, please feel free to to sub those in. But the other the other thing that's true is, as an audience member, 
Um, you do want to, you, you actually don't want to laugh at somebody. We, we really, as people, are not wired to be that cruel that we want to go to a show and laugh at somebody. So if somebody is um, either looking uncomfortable or, at, or saying a joke that is like revelatory but without being um, funny, we won't laugh at them. Like we won't. So that's the experience of, an, of, a, of, a, of a comic dying is often when the audience feels bad for you and doesn't want to humiliate you. Um, so really it is, like as a comic, what you're trying to do is uh, give the audience permission to like join you and sort of you're, you're like a you know, shaman guiding them through something and pointing out the things that are funny. Um, and they can be things about yourself and they can, it can be self-deprecating. It can be things about culture. It can even be things about the audience, but the audience always wants to feel like you are in control and you know what you're doing so that they're laughing with you. I mean, even if you think about like the poses that are often used for stand-up, it's like, you know, things like this, like an open-handed, like it's all an invitation. And like a, we use the same, you know, hand gestures for stand-up that we do for like a tour of the White House if you wanted to go there, uh, which we don't. And so, you know, again, it's like, uh, like an open posture and things like that are, you're inviting people in, um, and you're making them feel safe. One of my least, it's, it's, I know I've either done something wrong, but I usually just get mad, uh, is if I'm telling a joke and the audience, there's somebody who's a, who's a, someone who's, who gets sad, and there's just one person who goes, aww, aww, and everybody else is laughing because they've accepted the invitation, but that person hasn't. I've failed somehow to impart to them that I am healed from whatever I am speaking of. Uh, so, which is where comedy should eventually, when the joke is done, in my opinion, is when everyone gets that I've moved past whatever emotion this was generated. Well, that's really interesting. I feel like that's very interesting, the healing part. Um, yeah, and I, I well, and I, I think with, uh, I, I know that I only do well in front of certain crowds. It is totally dependent on the crowd that is seeing me. I, um, I can look like a messed up victim to thousands of people, uh, just a few miles that way. Uh, you know, like I, I don't, I, I feel like I'm not dependent on my performance. Uh, I can suck uh, terribly, uh, but whether I've gotten through it or not, uh, gotten through something because I've done, I've I've bombed, uh, you know, many times with material that has done very well, you know. So I think it's also dependent on the the facade, you know, on on the crowd uh, too. Not not in a blaming way, but just like we we need the crowd to get it. Um, I, I just. I want to say that I, I, I don't want to blame myself <laughs> for other people's reactions towards my material. Uh, that uh, I can, um, uh, uh, I definitely have worked on pieces and felt done with issues, and and the crowd is like, we still don't like it. <laughs> we still, you know, would like to leave <laughs> and feel sorry for you, and I made uncomfortable. Uh, so, so I don't, I don't know. At least that, that's my experience, which is a, that's a negative viewpoint. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, I, I think that that can also be different depending on the comic. I mean, I will say that we, we all are going to accept that it is true that like a, a dude standing on stage and especially a white straight cis dude will get a benefit of the doubt that that person is like this tour guide because we think of you know, like men as being tour guides of the universe anyway. So it's like, oh, this person is going to make me safe. Uh, just just the visual gift that you get when you walk out on stage and you look like you could be in the realm of Jerry Seinfeld. Because we're used to seeing that. Like, we're used to understanding how to respond to that. And then that, of course, has like a zillion shades. So like, how does an audience respond to like a, a woman who is like traditionally within the paradigm of like what is 
like young and hot and then like what does that person get to talk about yeah. what benefits does that person get and then what things do they have to overcome or like a person of color getting up on stage and talking about race to an all-white room versus like to a room that is diverse or like a black person talking to a room of all black people or me being a gay person um i absolutely don't want to self-select a gay audience and it's very interesting like as i've become more recognizable sometimes straight people that come to see me feel like they have to out themselves as straight <laughs> <laughs> if they like wait in line to, to meet me then they're like i'm straight but i like you you know <laughs> so i mean they're definitely Oh my god. Of course, the audience is bringing their own stuff into it, and depending on your material, or your performance style, or just your demographics, like, you're gonna be in different situations um, where things go a different way. Yeah. I just know I, I can bomb anywhere, and it really surprises me. There's always a new place to, to really fall, and, uh, that's, I, and, and that's the thing is, I feel like the thing that people who are starting comedy have uh, that people who have been doing a long time don't have, which is uh, the real excitement and uh, the joy of, on some level, of of trying new things and 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 risking and the energy that comes with that. So if you are just starting, know that we all kind of are on the same. We're all at the same place because we're all starting over and over again. I've been doing new jokes this week and just, they're a mess if you've been there uh, at 8 a.m. And so, uh, you know, it's it's just that painful, embarrassing starting over and over again that everyone has to do, whether you've been starting at the beginning or at the uh, at 25 years in. Um, we're all doing the same thing. Yeah, that's fascinating about how, because it, it is, you know, the, the analogy is you know sort of a one day at a time kind of thing that we're all in this just for today and we live in the moment i never thought of it from a stand-up comedy perspective is that every new joke you do because because i have this arrogance that uh that when if i have a new joke that doesn't have an end or doesn't have um is the structure isn't there yet i i think that i have the experience to at least milk the goodwill of the audience to get through it and that it's still exciting to do the job but I have more I, I have I have a hundred days more than the comic that's been doing it one day so I can sort of get out of it but it's also just as exciting to some extent as the first time I tried a joke 25 30 years ago so right and that way we are having a very the same experience so you know, like in terms of the amount of fear and the amount of joy when you finish the joke is is the same for the rest of your life when you're doing this 25 years from now it's going to be the same so uh they won't uh <laughs> i'm not yeah it's, it's like a, this, the shows have been really i've been very grateful for the audiences here because the audiences for me make our make this kabuki theater possible you know like uh Otherwise, without you, it's odd if I were standing up here by myself. <laughs> it's different than, than theater, though, you know? Because, like, theater, you're performing a, a story that's been written by others, and you're often doing it with other people, and you have to rehearse, oftentimes, in front of no one. And stand-up has a lot of rehearsal in front of witnesses. Well, I rehearse by myself, though, too. You, I rehearse a lot by were, myself. So I am probably more... You're unique in person. That, yeah, yeah. To some extent. Do you do any of that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, I think what is true is that all three of us are very different comics, and I think that's awesome, because the other thing is, again, this is how I want to start with, like, joke theory, and I also love us each talking about our experience, but... But like when I got into stand-up, I remember the first thing that um, I was one of two women working in Chicago to 200 men um, when I started doing stand-up, and 
Um, Beth Skelly, who's still a fucking star. Like, Beth and I started you together. Beth, Beth and I. Yeah. And, she, and she's a, a successful comic, so it's amazing because we've we both had that experience. But um, I would be told by these guys like that there was a certain methodology to do it. It's like you have to have a new hour every year and you gotta go out and do three to five shows every night and like you gotta be out every night. You're waiting in line for open mics and it doesn't matter if everybody's talking about dicks and like showing you a dick and it doesn't matter if like and like you're gonna hear rape jokes and like them and smile and like you know this there was this very specific gauntlet that I think was prescribed to me to run and um pretty Early, I just decided that I was going to try to do my own thing, but it wasn't like a conscious choice. I just was like, Stop scheming. Me. I just was scheming on my own vibe. And I wish that somebody had actually told me, like, scheming on your own vibe is actually the right way to do it, because there's no, there is no methodology, and, like, it's awesome for us to tell you, again, like, to try to dig out emotion and to try and like, go for taboo topics, but not necessarily the the first level of that topic and like these are important things to know but your journey is going to be your own and every comic is doing their own thing. Can you guys remember the first joke that worked, like the first joke you wrote that worked consistently? Mine was dumb, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Why wouldn't it have been? <laughs> a fascinating uh, ten minutes that was, but one of them was actually I brought a, um, it, was a it, it was a pamphlet that they gave out at my university about how to avoid being attacked. Uh, and I read and then riffed on it. Like I was just like, and then this wacky thing, they tell you not to run naked with money taped to your ass. Or whatever, right? <laughs> it was some sort of, I mean, it was literally, there was a lot of common sense stuff when they should have just said the drinking age should be raised. Now, uh, the, uh, but, the, but that was the first thing that consistently worked. And I remember it, it didn't have the structure of other jokes afterwards that consistently worked. So to write a joke, I mean, there's a million different ways to write a joke. Mm -hmm. And what do you got? Anything? Uh, well, just, uh, yeah, that I started, I start, created my own space. Like, I created my own safe space. I, I did shows in coffee shops uh, at 6 p.m. that nobody was at. Uh, I started my own mailing list back then when there was mail, and you know, I mean, went to, I went where the love was, which was performance art venues and um, uh, women's women's uh, shows at the time, and then I did some comedy clubs, but not much because of those experiences of like, you going out seventeen times a night, if you're not doing that, shit, if you're not doing, and I was just like, what? I, uh, yeah, it was so. Yeah, so I, I will say, start your own thing, you know, and and people will come. If you build it, they will come, as that movie says. It's, I think start your own thing is great, and that, that's absolutely what I've done. And I also am like a little bit of a, I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a workhorse. I'm like an engine that works off of failure really well which is a great personality type to have if you want to be a stand-up comic and really terrible for almost anything else like friendship. Um, but I would do those things that were my own things and then I would also, and this is something that I still do, always have goals within like the mainstream, like the places that didn't want me um, and always try to like... I'm very goal-oriented. I have tons of lists of goals constantly. Um, and I would always... Like, the first, when I was 22, I got my first job doing stand-up professionally uh, at a theater that was the top theater in Boston. And everybody else on the cast was in their late 30s and had been doing this for 15 years. And I was just... It was the day I graduated from college, and I didn't have a voice, but I was kind of funny. So they cast me in this thing, but I had never had a job before, I didn't need to know you actually had to show up at the time that they told you or go to photo shoots or anything, so I got fired after two months and when I had been hired they gave me a magnet that said the name of the theater on it and so for ten years I kept that magnet on my fridge. Just little things like that where like I kept it on my fridge until I was invited to perform at a comedy festival back in that town yeah. and performed at the theater that had fired me. And they were like, hey, you're doing all right. So I said, like, I can take the magnet off my fridge now. <laughs> but, like, that's, 
I feel like you have, um, anyway, this is all like how to be a professional yeah. stand-up comic, but I think it's about like wanting to prove that you can do it because it, that you have to have that inside of you. Let, well, let's start writing jokes. I love it. Let's, uh, yeah. Um, does anybody have, do you guys know a way to do it? Do you do it in a certain way? Uh, I do it with you. Oh! <laughs> you and I joke I machine. feel like the easiest way might be to, like, encourage, I mean, maybe people came in with stuff, but to encourage folks to maybe try that method that you used, or the, like, the um, confusing, the confusing yeah. thing yeah. about blank is this. This, yeah. and then, I mean, it's like blah, 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 and you can go into, and it doesn't have to be confusing. It can be the blank thing about blank is blank. Does anybody should we yeah. create like a line of people coming up to the stage oh. and does this work? Oh. Hello? Yes, it does. Oh God. Um, <laughs> nice. So good. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, you, you come up. You say the confu the blank thing about blank is blank. Yeah. Okay. So everybody knows that structure. And then we just how we go in a line, rows by row, and everybody has to go up. Who wants to go up? If you don't, if you don't, but we'll just go on. That. Is that cool? Oh yeah, I think so. And does anybody like? Does that again? If we're going to start with that, does that structure make vague sense to people? So if we wanted to do like another example, or do folks feel like they're good right now? Like the sad, the sad, they're the. How, give me a give me a topic. Yeah, that might be good. What is it? Cats. Cats. Yeah. Cats. cats. Everybody yeah. loves cats. cats. Oh, uh, the sad thing about cats is I'm allergic, which is you know tough on my sort of cred as a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Um, so if it would be easy, we could all start with like. A topic in common. Um, so I think cats might be too like a. Um, I mean, we could do cats, but what is there like a family? like being of the family? Oh, broad topic. Oh, family. family. We got siblings. We got uncles. Yeah. Things are happening. Yeah. So you can pick your emotion. Uh, family is the topic. Everybody want in? Good? Okay. Or unless you've already written a joke, you would like to try. Oh, Has yeah, anyone written a that. joke that they would like to do oh, it? Great. This right one. there. Bubble Cats. Bees. Bring it up. <laughs>